Good evening there, everybody. What is happening? Hopefully, you all are having a wonderful day today. So, of course, right after that of the Tyson Fury versus Francis Ngannou fight, and this has been an extraordinary year for boxing. It really has, all the way from that to Tyson Fury versus Francis Ngannou, which was not expected to be a great fight, but it was, all the way from David Benavides to Caleb Plants to Canelo to Jamel Charlo to Lomachenko to Devin Haney to Inouye versus Fulton to Crawford to Spence. Point is, is that this has been a phenomenal year. You know, Taylor versus Lopez, I could go on and on. But one of the fights that is going to be upcoming, a pay-per-view fight, I believe, on that is Showtime, between that of Demetrius, Boo Boo, Andrade, and Mr. David Benavidez, the Mexican monster. This is probably one of my top five matchups of the year that I'm most excited for. I think that if you were to talk about the five most anticipated matchups that I would have been the most excited for, probably, in no particular order, Terrence Crawford versus Spence, in a way versus Fulton, T. Fima Lopez versus Josh Taylor, and there might be another one that I'm personally forgetting. And then, of course, there would be this fight, and there's probably another fight that I'm not remembering out there at the moment, but I'm very, very excited for this fight, and the reason why that is is because both fighters have a lot to prove, and they just have so much on the line here. And I've already stated this, that if Demetrius Andre ends up losing this fight, it pretty much is the end for him. Because maybe certain people, they might be willing to fight him, but Demetrius Andre has always been a guy that, <laughs> for a lot of fighters, is better avoided than really encountering. And the reason why that is, is because a lot of people believe that he's just a little bit too crafty and a little bit too intelligent for his own good, for too little reward and they would probably be somewhat right within that respect now once again i've always been of the belief that i'm not sure if he's as crafty and as intelligent as a fighter and as skilled as what a lot of people say that he is but that's going to be proven in this david benavidez fight and that's a big part of the reason why this fight is so big because both david benavidez and demetrius andre They've been alleged boogeymen for many years, and I do think that certain fighters have avoided them or clearly, of course, not wanted to fight them or pushed off the fights for later times because they realize that they're a big threat and that they're going to have to prepare or that they're going to wait because <laughs> to make it worth their time. You know, in Andre's case, he pretty much has not been able to secure any big fight within his career. Some of those his fault, some of those not his fault. But anyways, Demetrius Andre is finally going to get that opportunity. And I think in the first part of this video, I'm going to post Demetrius Andrade's side. You know, I might even make this a separate video. I'm not quite sure. But I already did that of David Benavides. And I don't really want to redo that video because I thought I did somewhat of a good job with it. So in this fight or in this video, I'm either going to make it the first part of it or I'm just going to make it two separate videos. But anyways, let's see what Mr. Demetrius Bubu Andrade has to say. Let's get straight into it. It's the last stand. And here is your host. Brian Custer. That's right. It is the last stand. I'm Brian Custer. We bring you the biggest names in the sport. Uh, joining me today is one of the top fighters at 168 pounds. My guest is a two-time, two-weight division world champion. It's me again, Demetrius Andrade. What's up, man? Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. 154, WBO, WBA, 160, WBO. Now I'm looking to get that green thing at 168 versus David Benavides, and this is a massive fight. This is massive. This is massive. This is, massive. This is the biggest fight that you can fucking put together this year. So, November 25th, Showtime pay per view. But how did it come about? Um, just me being able to, you know, get away from everybody and be able to write my own storyline at pretty much the And it's about time that you realize that, Mr. Demetrius Andre, because that really did fuck up a certain amount of your career. Because too many of these fighters, they're either worrying about the top dog or a fighter that may not be particularly interested in fighting them or other fighters that may not be particularly interested in fighting them or promoters that really don't have their best interest in heart like that of Bob Arum or some other guys. Demetrius Andre, as well as certain other fighters, fighters finally realize that it's time to pave their own path. And unfortunately for Mr. Demetrius Andre, it might be a little bit too late for him because I believe that he's about 37 years old. Or if he's not 37 years old, he's getting very close to that. And David Benavidez is a legit light heavyweight fighter. I know certain people say, oh, he makes the weight, all this other stuff. David Benavidez is a natural light heavyweight fighter. There is no doubt about that in my mind. And Andre probably could somewhat relatively fit well at 168, 
but I believe that this is going to be his second fight there. He is a little bit older when it comes down to it. And on top of that, I just don't know how really skilled he actually is because he's never been in the ring with someone really worth of note. You know, once again, not completely his fault, but not completely not his fault either. You know, so once again, we'll see. Tail end of my career and say, hey, I'm free. I'm looking to fight whoever is willing to fight. And I have nothing holding me back, stopping me. There's no politics. There's no um, um, network issues. There's no issues. Yeah. There's no issues. Was that the issue in the past, you think? I, don't, I would say no, because I've been on networks with other top fighters and they still didn't want to make it happen but that was over there over here at showtime they put on the greatest fights and they continue to do that and now i'm part of making that one of those fights happen <laughs> every single time that there's a fighter on showtime they always make sure to make them say uh that they put on the greatest fights and that overall always to make sure the pbc cast and thank out him and and you know what i don't really have a problem with that because showtime a lot of the times does put on the best fights of course, unfortunately, Showtime, uh, they're not sponsoring that, uh, you know, of boxing anymore, I believe. But PBC, on average, yes, they have put on the best fights probably for some years now, at least debatably. Of course, Top Rank and HBO, you know, they're somewhat of a valiant, uh, you know, company as well, or they put up a valiant effort. But I just think that there's more popular fighters in the Showtime stable. Of course, the zone they gave it a run, you know, a de decently good run as well, and they're still up and running, but... You know, right now, they might be on the decline as well, but we'll see. Yeah, so it's always going to be great. You know, and you, you've mentioned this for the longest. You've been demanding big fights. Um, guys have been avoiding you for a number of reasons. Do you believe all of that talk goes away after this fight? Of course it goes away. It goes, it's right now. It's, 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 the talk's over. Yeah. For, for us to get through the finish line, to be here talking about it and that it got announced. And like I said to Dave, I'm glad we got over like the hurdles of like, you know, the contract stuff and still whatever. But we're here. We, I wanted to make it, make it happen. I wasn't shying away. And so at the end of the day, where else is he going to go? Where else? I do give Demetrius Andre a certain amount of credit because I have a certain amount of people in my comment section saying that, you know, oh, uh, when it comes down to, you know, he... Uh, he overall, you know, he might pull out to fight all this other stuff. And, he, and, you know, he ducked Janabek and all this other stuff. You know, listen, I'm not saying on the know that Demetrius Andre has had the perfect career and that he's made every single perfect decision. But uh, the thing is, on the know with Demetrius Andre that, that I do give him credit for, he did try to get certain fights. He did try to call out Golovkin and Canelo. Uh, you know, he did try to get the Charlo uh, fight, at least without a Jamal Charlo. You know, Jamal Charlo, of course, he backed out of because he thought he was getting screwed. And listen, I get it. I understand that at times. But Demetrius Andre was really not in a position to turn down that fight. As they say, beggars can't be choosers. You know, but once again, I give Andre some credit because he could have went to 168, bitch, moan, and complain. You know, about, oh, Canelo isn't fight me. Why don't you fight me? You know, and not created his own path and just completely relying on Canelo Alvarez to possibly give him that fight you know, in that lottery ticket. But instead, he said, you know what? If I'm going to get that Canelo Alvarez fight, I'm going to have to go through it the hard way, and I'm going to have to prove everyone to the world that I can beat someone like David Benavidez. And if I beat David Benavidez, Canelo Alvarez is going to have no choice but to fight me, whether he likes it or not. So I give Demetrius Andre a lot of credit there because he could have went overall the bitch boy route. You know, certain other fighters have gone for years. And to be credit... You know, to, to, to say, you know, uh, Andre did kind of do that for years. Once again, you can't do that. That's not always going to give you big fights. You have to go after certain guys gradually at a time, and then your following gets a little bit bigger, and then more people will demand you to be in bigger fights because eventually that pressure is going to get to certain fighters. But unfortunately, Andre, he just doesn't really have that big of a fan base. He has like his little cult fan base, you know, a cult fan base, but it's just not anywhere near as big for a lot of people really to demand a Canelo Alvarez fight or really to demand a David Benavidez fight. But if he does win this fight, you know, which I, once again, I admire the fact that he took the David Benavidez fight, you know, especially since this is his second fight at 168, even though he probably couldn't actually fit at 168, but you know, still, you know, the fact that, you know, he, this is his second fight and the fact that he's taking on him, you know, I, I have to give him a lot of admiration for that, but we'll see. I'm gonna go. sit back and wait for Canelo. It's, 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 that's impossible. Mm. Is this the and biggest? This ain't the movie Tom Cruise. Is this the biggest fight of your 15-year career? 
Yeah, of course it is. You know. Yeah, of course it is. Who the fuck has he fought throughout his 15-year career? No offense, but once again, Andre is the only guy that I know that's a two-way division champion that has never beat, not even just a current champion when they had a belt, but a former champion. <laughs> and I know certain people might say, well, Canelo vacated titles and certain people vacated titles. And, and you know, that that's a point. I understand. But at the end of the day, once again, it's like, dude, you haven't fought like one guy, like Danny Jacobs, like, <laughs> like you know, Billy Dosan. And now to be fair, not all those fights, you know, could come to fruition because some of those guys also were not interested in him. But it's like, damn, dude, like, you know, not not a Danny Jacobs, like David Lemieux, like nobody. <laughs> this is um, this is definitely like the Super Bowl. This is definitely it right here, you know? And I'm glad that Demetrius Andre is saying that because that's, that, that's basically his way of saying that this is the biggest fight in my career. And I pretty much have to put up or shut up in this fight. And I'm going to have no choice but to finally prove myself in this fight overall as what I've been saying that I've been saying that about myself for the past 15 years which is that I'm one of the best fighters in the world and that I deserve to be the number one pound for pound fighter you know so Andre realizes once again and Andre does appear to me to know that David Benavidez that he's gonna have a very decent chance to win this fight Andre knows that but once again I give Andre a lot of credit I do think that Andre realizes that he still has a great chance to win this fight I think that Andre if I was going to guess just in my personal view, I think that he either slightly favors himself or he thinks it's about a 50-50 fight. And if I had to guess, just in my personal view, I think that he believes that it's about a 50-50 level fight. Just the way that I don't see him trash talking David Benavidez and just the way that he's talking about him, I think he realizes that there's a good chance that he could win this fight, but <laughs> it's almost kind of like that aging lion, you know, uh, you know, that's still depend, you know, defending his pride, defending his pack. You know, but then a new real contender actually comes. That line has been defending that territory for 10, 15, 20 years. But, you know, now he sees a lion that actually is intelligent enough and dangerous enough, dangerous enough to possibly take over the pack. And he knows that with his experience and with his talents and, you know, with his strength that he still might be able to take on that lion. But he knows that there's a very decent chance that that lion could possibly overtake him as well. That's just the way that I see it. I think that Andre believes that David Benavides has a great chance to win this fight or that he is going to be a very big threat, just in my personal view. But who knows? We'll see. There's no... Um, listen, every fight matters. Every fight I had led me to this point. Every fight, um, you know, gave me the lessons and the learning opportunities to move forward in my career and get myself better. But this fight here is really going to bring the best Andre out because I know what... I certainly hope so, Mr. Demetrius Andre, because once again, as I've already stated, I've never seen Demetrius Andre in a performance and said, wow, that's one of the 10 best fighters in the world. I've just never personally seen it. That doesn't mean, once again, that I don't think that he's not relatively talented. That doesn't mean that I don't think he's an intelligent and crafty boxer. I just don't think that I've ever seen him on the level as what a lot of other people said that he was. But once again, this is his time to prove me wrong. This, what's on the line? And once again, you never know what a performance a boxer is going to pull out because Demetrius Andre, a lot of the times, is a guy that fights to the caliber of his competition. There's a lot of fighters that are like that. Tyson Fury is one of those guys. You know, Terrence Crawford at times is one of those guys. You know, there's a lot of guys <laughs> that, that do that. You know, there's only a certain amount of fighters that they're dominant literally every single fight. And I don't see rarely any flaws, you know, uh, you know, and that does not mean that they don't have any flaws. But like Canelo, Canelo usually is quite dominant in every single fight that he's in, at least when he's at his peak. You know, and there's a couple of other fighters that may potentially be like that Crawford to a degree. But Crawford at times also fights to the level of his competition, like against David Avanesi. And I thought he was a little bit too hittable. You know, against Thomas DeLorme, I also thought he was a little bit too hittable. You know, against that of Aegis Kavalaskis, he did not look that good, actually. And he was even knocked down in that fight, by the way. But the referee did not count it. But it was a legitimate knockdown because Aegis Kavalaskis did hit him with the right hand. And Crawford tried to hold on to him. And then he took a knee. So that was a legitimate knockdown. But, of course, to Crawford's credit, he got back up and he was able to knock him out. There's a lot on the line here, you know? Everything's on the line out here. All the marbles. This is this is the undisputed fight in itself. <laughs> Once again, I gotta know where Demetrius Andre learned how to talk. You know, for all the marbles. It's for all the marbles against David Benavides. <laughs>
Benavidez said this thing is going to be a war. Realistically, what kind of fight do you think it's going to be fought stylistically on the 25th? I think it's going to be a little bit more, a little more impact than Plant and uh, Benavides. More than that. Yeah. More than that. I expect it to be a little bit more impactful than that of Benavides and Plant as well, just because Plant. He's relatively talented, and I think that he's around the same level as Andre. But Caleb Plant doesn't really quite have the conditioning as Andre, at least from what it appears. Now, once again, I don't really know what I'm going to see out of Andre in this fight because he's never even close to had a level, a fight at this level, any time in his career. Not even close. So once again, it's going to be very interesting. I don't know if we're going to see an Andre that's going to dominate David Benavidez about eight rounds to four, nine rounds to three. I don't know if we're going to see Andre knocked out within six rounds. I don't know if we're going to see a fight that's going to go back and forth the whole entire time and it's a split decision. I don't really know what's going to happen because, once again, you know, it's kind of like, you know, in a way against Fulton, you know, in a way, although I give him a great amount of respect, I did not think he fought, a, you know, a super elite caliber of fighters. But, of course, the way that he treated Fulton now, we have to take a look back at his resume and take a look at fighters like Emmanuel Rodriguez and other guys like that you know, as better than what we probably once originally thought they were. Just because of the way that he folded up on Steve, or the way that he folded that as Stephen Fulton, basically like a lawn chair. More than Tyler and Canelo. More than that. More than that. A lot more than that. I was going to ask you about What did you think about Charlo Canelo? I mean, from the jump, I thought it was a mismatch because, you know, weight does matter. Look, yeah. you know, look like, I don't know if Benavidez's been at the gym, but he looks a little fat there, boy. He looks like he has a lot of weight to come off. But that's good. That works in my favor yeah. because I'm in shape. I'm ready to go. Um, if he's going to struggle and... I also agree that David Benavidez is a little bit heavier than what he's indicating. And that's why when David Benavidez, whenever he's asked a question about his weight, he gets a little bit touchy. Or, you know, he kind of tells people, you know, well, those people are fucking stupid. Because David Benavidez knows damn well that he's not a natural 168 pounder. But it is what it is. He can make the relative weight, and he's close enough to their size. He's only about a weight class difference, so it is what it is. You know, but but I do agree a little bit with Andre that I thought that the Charlo versus Canelo Alvarez fight was a mismatch. I think that the weight was a part of it. But once again, I don't see Canelo really as a natural 168 pounder anyway. Canelo is a little bit more of a blown up middleweight. He's like a mix between a 168 and 160 pounder. Like he's about a natural 164 pounder. That's that's pretty much what Canelo is. Because yeah, he rehydrates pretty heavily, but the guy is only five foot seven to five foot eight with a 71 inch arm reach. And there's only so much that you're gonna be able to do with that. But the fact that he's been able to be exceptional, even in some of the higher weight classes. And I know some people might say, well, you know, he fought these weak white boys, all this sort of stuff. Caleb Plant, once again, <laughs> for these guys saying that he's this allegedly weak white boy, all of a sudden when he were to fight David Benavidez, all of a sudden it's one of the biggest fights in boxing. Does that make any sense? <laughs> you know, Billy Joe Saunders, this weak European white boy, when he was about to fight Demetrius Andre, one of the biggest fights in boxing. Does that make any sense? He wants to be heavy and it's going to be a struggle for him to make weight. And so that works in my favor. But also, me coming up, I only have one I'm going to be very interested to see who's going to have the better conditioning. I think that a lot of people expected David Benavidez to have the better conditioning because Caleb Plant is known, you know, for kind of, uh, you know, tiring out. Of course, talking about the Plant versus Benavidez fight, you know, and on top of that, he's a guy that is a little bit defensively irresponsible at times, although as talented as what he is. But Demetrius Andre, he's usually known for having somewhat of relative good conditioning. But once again, I don't know how good it's going to be. Like I said, I have about 99 different questions, you know, for this fight. And all of them are going to be answered. At 168 pounds. Yeah. And, but at the end of the day, I know this is the biggest fight to be made. So let's make this happen. I wanted to get like one or two wins, but the time doesn't work that way. Time works now. So I'm here now. Let's make this fight happen. And let's get it on. So I was watching some, some of your past fight, Boo Boo, and I kept listening to the commentary. And you've knocked guys down, but haven't finished them. Can you do that against Benavidez? I think the extra weight and um, that I'm putting... Just to interrupt Demetrius Andre really quick, do I think that Andre is going to be able to stop David Benavidez? It's not impossible. I say that I give it about a 20% chance maybe even a little bit lower, you know, give or take. Anywhere from like a 10 to 30% chance. But I wouldn't favor it. If anyone's going to get the knockout in this fight, in my view, it would be David Benavidez. I think Benavidez has more natural power. And I don't think that Benavidez is an A-plus puncher. I think that he's an A-minus puncher. 
I think he's someone that gets you with accumulation. I think he's someone that gets you with the volume of punches that he throws. But, you know, when it comes to Andre, he clearly can hit. And you never know what type of power you're going to see from someone when they, of course, have their back against the wall. You know, because Andre, as he just said, this is going to be a Super Bowl. He knows that he's pretty much going to be an animal that is backed into a corner in this fight and that he pretty much has to fight for the life of his career. Because if he loses this fight, his career is pretty much over. So once again, it's going to be very particularly interesting to see the level of power. I think that he can hurt Benavidez. I think that he can even potentially knock him down or potentially, you know, uh, you know, hurt him at times. Do I, but would I favor him to knock him out? No. On and the muscle and just knowing that at the end of the day, this is boxing. Yeah, put the dudes down. I was explaining to some people just because, you know, I have 20 knockouts. So I, I didn't knock people out. I didn't put everybody down. Um, sometimes it's come to a point where it's like, yo. Once again, I'm also interested to see uh, the level of conditioning. I'm also interested to see the chin of Demetrius Andre. Uh, I'm not going to say that he's chinny, but he can be hurt. I've seen him hurt several times in his career. I've seen it against Liam Williams. I've seen it a little bit against Vanus Martirosian. I've seen it a little bit in a couple of other fights. We'll see how that chin holds up because Benavidez is going to hit Demetrius Andre here and there. You know, so we'll we'll see. Man got to eat. Man got to live. He can't do nothing. Let me just entertain. Let me show how my boxing skills play in now. Let me show how technical I can be, how my mind works, how all that stuff happens. Um, and, and that's what boxing is about. And so I show that. I show the diverse tools that I have all the time. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I can carry and fight and win every single round. Interesting. Um, win every single round. That's a big statement, Andre. We'll see about that, sir. I hope that, you know, for your sake that you're right, but I'm not quite so sure about that. Tim Bradley said this. Talking about Benavides. I think his biggest issue in this fight is going to be his footwork. I feel that he has terrible footwork. Squares up often. I feel like a fighter with... I agree. David Benavides does not have good footwork. Like He does not have good footwork. He shuffles his feet a lot. He puts his back foot in front of his front foot a lot. You know, he shuffles his feet. He does square up a lot of the times. I agree. He does not have good feet. But what he does lack in footwork, he is going to make up in the volume of punches that he throws in his conditioning and his level of stamina. Uh, when it comes down to it, and just his relentlessness. Now, once again, David Benavides, in my view, is a bully fighter. He's a guy that, if you're actually able to push him back, I'm not quite sure, you know, how much Benavides is actually going to be able to handle that. So, once again, I'm going to be very interested to see how Andre is going to be able to handle that if he can actually keep Benavides back, because you are going to have to hurt David Benavides and gain his respect in order to win this fight, because if Andre you know, just keeps this completely in the middle of the ring the whole entire time, you know, or if he does not throw enough or if he's backing up the whole entire time, I don't think that that's going to work. Andrade's skill set and experience, he's going to expose that. Come forward, pick his shots wisely, be elusive. Uh, he's elusive on defense as well. Make that guy miss. I think we're going to see a better version of Benavidez if he's going to pull off this win. But I'm telling you now, do not count out Andrade. He's a sneaky Sneaky fighter, well-schooled boxer, and has what it takes to outbox Benavidez. Yeah, of course I do. Um, Timothy Bradley knows boxing, should I say. He knows what he's talking about. But it's easier said than done. But I know I've been doing this for a long time as well. You know, I've been in professional uh, 15 years now. Yeah. Uh, haven't been hurt, haven't been, like, hurt bad. Yeah. Um, uh, well... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to say that you haven't been hurt bad. There's been a couple times where I've seen you hurt bad. Now, if you want to talk about, you know, you were never close to being knocked out, then, I mean, that that's fine if you want to state that. But I don't think there's ever been a, you know, a part where Benavidez, you know, has been like that. So, I mean, you, you know, you can say that all you want to. But, you know, I, I'll tell you what, I've seen Demetrius Andre more rock than what I ever have David Benavidez. Haven't been down, you know. People be like, oh, he got knocked out by like, Come on. You know what I'm saying? This, 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 you can never go to a, a fight and say Demetrius Andre been hit yeah. hard yeah. and down and he's. Well, uh, well no, sir. I, I can't say that. Uh, and once again, this is why, once again, I'm going to need to see it to believe it from Demetrius Andre. I keep getting these comments from Demetrius Andre fans and they keep acting like he's the next Floyd Mayer the Jr. or that he's the next best thing. And I'm sorry, but I've just never seen that. 
I've seen a fighter once again that is crafty and that is a decently schooled boxer, but a guy that I've just never seen as an exceptional talent. I think that he's a great talent. I think that he's a very good talent. But when you talk about an exceptional talent, I'm thinking about Canelo. I'm thinking about Gennady Golovkin. I'm thinking about someone like Shakur Stevenson. I'm thinking about, you know, someone like even Lomachenko at one point in time. You know, I'm thinking about, you know, Terrence Bud Crawford, Errol Spence Jr., Fury, Usyk, Inouye, you know, other fighters like that, Javante Tang Davis. Those are fighters that I think about when I thought think about exceptional talents. And I'm just not quite sure if I see that from Andre once again. I certainly could be wrong, but we'll see. All over the place. So, um, biggest thing I'm that he fresh. has that you have to watch out for. Because he, he seems like in the second half of the fight, he overwhelms guys. Biggest thing that he has that you have to watch out for on the 24th. Um, I, I'm just keep it as that. That's cool, but I have, that is something that is just going to be his natural instinct. So I'm I'm going to study. I'm going to learn. I'm going to figure out how to keep him from even getting to that point. And if he does, the fight, so I'm, I must be winning. And all I got to do is use my IQ and pick the shots and do exactly what Timothy Bradley said. Um, uh, and you- that's exactly what... What Andre, in my view, is going to have to watch out for the most in this fight, first of all, keep both of your hands up at all times. Andre sometimes, and I'm not sure if it's just because he's been fighting bums for his whole entire career, but a lot of the times, sometimes he gets a little bit too wild. He'll wing that left hand from left field, and at times he doesn't have his hands up. So, you know, and once again, I think it's more than likely because he's not fighting guys that he feels threatened by, but <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's like, you know, he, he's going to have to be a lot sharper in this fight. His defense is going to have to be very good. And when David Benavidez gets in that 50-50 range, you are at times going to have to exchange with him whether you like it or not. You're going to have to try to hurt him or gain his respect and back him up. But if he doesn't, watch out because David Benavidez is going to throw a jab in your face. He's going to try to whip you with uppercuts and hooks to the body and up to the face. He's going to try to bully you up against the ropes. He's going to try to use his size and his power. He's going to try to use all that to his weight advantage. And I'm not quite sure... If Andre has the level of power like that of a Canelo or a Bevel or someone like that to where they could use that to their potential advantage or they can back off David Benavidez enough overall to where they can say, you're not just going to bully me around like that. Once again, we'll see. The plan is I've been walking into anything. You've confronted Canelo um, after one of his victories and he told you, go fight somebody. Do you believe the winner of this fight gets the Canelo fight? I personally think that the winner of this fight gets the Canelo Alvarez fight. I think that Canelo would probably much more rather see David Benavidez just because he knows that that fight would sell a whole lot more. And I don't think that he's ever been a fan of possibly fighting Demetrius Andre. But I think Canelo Alvarez will fight the winner of this. Canelo knows that if he doesn't fight the winner of this fight, that his legacy, you know, he'll still be remembered as an all-time great fighter. But it's just going to be such a huge black X on his record He'll be hearing it for the rest of his life. Oh no, fuck Canelo! <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I know. Listen, because he's been like, avoiding both of you guys. Right? Yeah, like at the end of the day, Canelo's career, my hat goes off. To- well, I can't really say that Canelo's been avoiding David Benavidez. I just think that Canelo Alvarez has been waiting for that fight to be worthwhile, and I think he now realizes that the fight is hyped up. It certainly is highly promoted. He's got his tune-ups in. I I predict more than likely that Canelo will probably fight one more fight in May. And then I think that the big fight is going to be in September between himself and David Benavidez. That's what I personally believe. But of course, that's all assuming that Benavidez beats Demetrius Andre, which of course, there is no guarantee. This is a very close fight. Um, um, He does what he does. He has the luxury to do whatever he wants to do. There's no... You can't tell me to go fight somebody and I can name a bunch of fighters, right? Who you fought that hasn't fought nobody. Rocky Fielding, you're the young dumb, you know what I'm saying? I, uh, um, uh, the last rider, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, But at the end of the day, rider and these guys, they could be tough fighters. Some of them might not be, but that doesn't matter when you know my... <laughs> Demetrius Andre, you, you, you did the... You did the... <laughs> Once again, I need to know if Demetrius Andre has like a speech impediment or something. And I'm not trying to be a jerk or anything like that. But he just sounds like he has a weird accent or something like that. I I don't really know what it is. But every time this dude talks, man, like he sounds like he's about like 75% deaf or something. Like, I don't know what's the deal.
My pedigree is Olympian. When you know my pedigree is world champion. When you know my pedigree is, you know, I can box your ass off. You feel me? Yeah. So therefore, it's like, okay, cool. I fight, beat David Benavides. Does that give me the Canelo fight? I don't know. We gotta go short, talk to the high ups and figure out. I definitely think it'll give you the Canelo Alvarez fight. I think Canelo is probably going to fight another fight next. You know, no matter who ends up winning this fight. And I think he knows that, you know, whoever ends up winning this fight, he's going to have to face. But <laughs> make no doubt about it. I do believe that Canelo Alvarez, that he really is hoping that is David Benavidez. Because I think that he knows that there's more things that he can probably counter on Benavidez than what he can of Andre. I would probably favor Canelo to be both fighters if he's at his best. But Andre is a type of style, you know, because he's tall and lanky. And on top of that, you know, he knows how to use his feet and, you know, use distance that he can be a little bit tricky for Canelo. I don't think that, you know, he would knock out Canelo or anything like that, but he could potentially give Canelo a tougher fight or beat him, you know, you know, or give him a tougher fight than what Canelo Alvarez would want. How to force it, but you can't make two dogs fight unless they want it. Obviously, you have an undisputed champion in this weight division. Do you believe in your heart or heart, though, the winner of this fight is the best fighter at 168? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. And this is only my second fight at 168. <laughs> so, I mean, I I'll say this. Whoever does win this fight has a great chance to beat Canelo Alvarez. I'll, I'll certainly state that. Unless, of course, the winner of this fight looks like absolute shit. But the winner of this fight certainly will have a 50% chance at the very least. Or at least a 40% chance at the very least to defeat Canelo Alvarez. You know, uh, because it would give them the confidence. And Canelo, I'm not really sure where he's at. You know, he's 33 years old. Of course, that does not seem relatively old, but he's been fighting for 18 years. We're in a good position here. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. So, yeah, it's all good. Um, it's all good. What do you think of Jamal Charlo on this call? Some people, of course, will say, oh, well, Andre has been fighting for 15 years and all that stuff. Let's not use that excuse. Yeah, he's been fighting for 15 years, but he's been fighting for 15 years against bums of the month. You know, it's completely different when you're fighting against bums for your whole entire career. And then all of a sudden you expend, you know, all your energy into one mega fight that you've had throughout your career versus Canelo Alvarez, who's fought several or a dozen a great fighters throughout his career. Are fighting David's brother. Are you interested to see what Charlo looks like? I mean, yes, yes and no, because he's been out. He's been having issues. Um... I wonder if they're going to use the weight excuse for that because, uh, you know, D D Jose Benavidez has never been at 160 before. I wonder if Charlo looks really good in that fight if they're going to use a weight excuse. You know, just like they like to do with all the fighters that they love to hate on. I recently talked to him. I'm talking about the LDBC and new media, of course. Glad he um, is like, you know, um, Fixing his issues, his, his situation with his family and stuff like that. Things going in his well, in his way, and so that's that's a that's a great thing. And hopefully, that's getting his groove back to get back in ring. I just think it's a big mis mismatch, and um, yeah, I, when I see Chalo, we ever get together, we have Chalo. Um, I got a story, and he, okay. I, I got something. In it. Uh, but I want him to be here. To, okay, did you tell it? Yeah, I want him to be here. So just yeah, what? Yeah. Huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> but we saw you guys on Instagram live. He said he wanted to fight you. And I mean, do you think? Well, Chawo, <laughs> as Demetrius Andre would put it, Chawo has been running away from elite competition for many years. You know, in the LDBC and the media, they always say this shit about Charlo's been chasing after all these guys. Charlo is that one dog behind the fence that thinks he's all big, tough, and bad. And then when that gate is finally open to other dogs, he puts his tail in between his legs, and then all of a sudden, he's quiet as a church mouse. So I really don't want to hear shit about Jamal Charlo. You know, it is what it is. Jamal Charlo has had his opportunities. He had his opportunity against Andre, against Canelo, against a couple of other fighters, Benavidez. He didn't take any of them. So <laughs> it is what it is. That fight will come about in the future. You, uh, that's where my story comes in. I okay. got a story. I got a story. Okay. I got a story. With Charlo. Before I retire. Yeah. <laughs> that fight isn't going to happen unless Andre beats that of uh, Canelo Alvarez and also David Benavidez. So a lot would have to fall in line. Before this, <laughs> we're going to figure that out. We're going to figure that out. What did you think about Caleb Plant smacking him at, at that, that Spence uh, Crawford weigh in? I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was hilarious. Because at the end of the day, like, when I know, I understand. Yeah, and certain people might be pissed off that Caleb Plant did that. But you know what? And, and I don't know, to be fair, I don't know the backstory. 
But Jamal Charlo and both the Charlo brothers, they're both known for talking a lot of shit and being highly emotional and probably rubbing the people the wrong way. So, I mean, you know, Caleb Plant said that he wanted to fight Charlo next. So could it be that maybe he was trying to piss him off? Who knows? Maybe. But, you know, it, it wouldn't shock me at all if Jamal Charlo said some shit that kind of pissed off Caleb Plant and then they got into it. It wouldn't shock me at all because Charlo has always been a little bit abrasive. He's always been a guy that you know, kind of gets over emotional and a guy that tries to get under people's skin at times. So I wouldn't be surprised at all. Um, Chalo is, you know, going through his mental yeah, stuff, yeah. his family. Maybe he's a, you know, he started realizing things and it wasn't what it was yeah. and yeah. whatever glitters ain't gold. Yeah. And he's making different moves. But when you was ignorant, Chalo, yeah. Yeah. when you was talking all that shit, Chalo, yeah. They ain't forget about. They ain't forget about that. <laughs> you know? That might have been the first time I think I've ever heard Demetrius Andre pronounce an L. They, it's, 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 the yeah. proof is in the pudding. Yeah. You know, it's, um, people gotta hash things out one way or another. But I real, I, and I didn't really know the story. I guess like he was Plan, touching his face yeah, or something. Plan said he, he, we had him on the last day. And he said he pulled his beard and called yeah. him. You know. Something, something white boy, and so he yeah. said, you know, you're getting, you're not gonna disrespect him like nah, that. Yeah, for sure, he should know better. Yeah. And, yeah, and I don't know, but it's 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 weird because it didn't happen at that moment. It happened yeah. like like month later. I mean, like hour an hour later or something. Yeah. He just went up to him, smacked him. Well, he, he, that was when he put talked plugged it. Now he was making comments before, yeah, yeah. but then at that okay. time he went up and, and grabbed his beard. Oh, okay, okay. And that's when Caleb said, I, there was going to be no more. Yeah, 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 he yeah. had enough. <laughs> <laughs> After this fight, realistically, what do you think people are going to be saying about Demetrius Andre as a fighter? I'm glad we we got to. to I'm glad we was able to see who Demetrius Andre is. We are going to see who you are, man. And once again, you know, I'm kind of, uh, you know, I'm not going to say that I'm rooting for anyone in this fight, but you know, I hope for your sake once again that you do prove yourself to be who you say that you are. Uh, I would love for you to get a certain opportunity against Canelo Alvarez, you know, if you prove yourself to be who you said that you are. But once again, we are going to see who you truly are in this fight. We're also going to see who David Benavidez truly is in this fight. But more importantly, you, because you're the guy that's going to be the underdog in this fight. And you're going to be the guy, once again, that has never really been in a big fight before. So this is going to be interesting. I'm glad we was able to see who Demetrius Andre is. You know, Clarissa Shields always talks about you as being the guy at 168. When like when we were talking about her and and about Canelo and stuff, she's like, don't forget about Boo Boo. She's oh, always yeah, said, sure. she of always says that. Of course, man. Um, always says she that. knows she knows boxing. She knows I can fight. She's been in the gym with me. And um, at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, why, why, how, why, why, why we forgetting about why if, why you everybody avoiding this this fight yeah. if they're better than me um you know the deal we always let people submit questions through social media got a number of them for them we'll just get to a few a number of them a number of them purist asks after watching charlo plant billy joe saunders what style would you bring to a potential canelo fight uh that obviously hasn't been working in the past with the other guys yeah i, guess. I think demetrius andre more than likely would probably have to use his boxing ability and he would probably try to have to outbox canelo alvarez from the outside but what andre would have to do is that he would more than likely have to rely on his conditioning he would have to try to throw at times overall maybe if canelo does shuffle his feet at times canelo can do that as well you know hit him when he's trying to come on the inside and try to frustrate canelo alvarez hopefully you know frustrate him to the point to where he does not cut off the ring effectively even though he's gotten much better at that you know, try to go to the body a little bit early, you know, always, you know, make sure to get the hell out of the corners when it comes down to it and try to frustrate him. Now, would he be able to do that super successfully? I don't know, but we'll see. Just just my style alone is different. I'm more finesse. I, I got shot punches. I got looping punches. I got design punches for everything um, in every angle. Uh, you know, I can't really tell Canelo all the people so much because I might have to use it if it ever happens. I have okay. to use these things. Uh, Renee asks, do you feel apart from this fight, big fights are behind you at this point or are there big fights on the future you think after this? Well, he better, <laughs> he better uh, overall think that big fights are on for the horizon, you know, because once again, uh, of course, there's Canelo when it comes down to it. There's Benavidez. But, you know, the question might just be asking, you know, potentially after if you beat Benavidez or if you beat Canelo Alvarez, 
you know, do you think that there's really going to be anyone else worth fighting or do you think that anyone else is going to fight you? But yeah, there's still some big fights out there. He could fight Dave Morell if he wanted to. He could fight, you know, Kay the Plant, potentially. He could fight some of the other guys, Jamal Charlo, because then maybe Jamal Charlo would actually be willing to take that fight. You know, he could take some of those fights. So I have no doubt about it. If he wins both of those fights, that big fights are on the horizon. I mean, I guess like um, how I look at it, this is definitely the big fight. Um, Chalo is definitely a, a, a good fight. Plant's definitely a good fight. And Canelo is definitely a good fight. So those fights are still able to happen after this fight. So, yeah. Uh, AJ asks, do you really think Canelo should take the winner of this fight? Of course. If he is. What kind of a dumbass question is that? <laughs> of course, overall, he should take the winner of this fight. You know, I don't know overall, you know, what type of question that was. And he said, do you think that he will? I think that Canelo will take the winner of this fight. I just don't think it's going to be his next fight. I think that Canelo Alvarez is going to stack up his money in the next fight. I think he's going to fight, you know, a fighter that can probably sell someone decently well. And then I think he's going to sell the big bonanza in September. That's just personally what I think. The king? Yeah. If he doesn't, if he doesn't, who, who do you, he says, if he doesn't, who do you see him fighting? Somebody small out this weight class, so he could be like this Canelo, this Canelo. Nobody beats this Canelo. I'm 168 pounds. He 147 pounds, 140 pounds. He come up. And nobody beats this Canelo. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and listen, I understand because Canelo Alvarez's last fight against you know Jamel Charlo, I understand. Uh, you know, but I don't know if I see Canelo Alvarez fighting a 168 pounder in his next couple fights, other than the winner of Andre versus Benavidez. I just don't see Canelo taking a fight against David Morrell or any of the other 168-pounders right now. I just don't see it happening. Why would you want to fight David Morrell when he's such a big threat? And on top of that, he's just way younger, and he's a guy that really, if you beat him, a lot of people are going to say that he was probably too green anyway. So I just don't see that happening. If Canelo does fight someone else next, it's probably going to be Jaime Munguia, Jamal Charlo, you know, someone that can definitely sell. You know, but uh, I'm not quite sure if he's going to fight the winner of this fight next. Okay. Come to the last segment of the show. It is the last day. And I'm going to ask you a serious question. You just give me the first thing that comes to your mind. You ready? Yep. Okay. In your opinion, pound for pound, best fighter in the world right now is who? That's tough. That's I think right now it's Terrence Bud Crawford. But if you were to debate that of, once again, if we were debating, uh, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Canelo Alvarez. You know, Usyk, uh, you know, uh, in a way. And I also put Fury up there. Now, of course, Fury definitely lost some esteem after that shit performance over Francis Ngannou. But Fury still clearly is in my top five just because he has too many accomplishments. And at his best, he is very, very much skilled. And he's a guy that did defeat two fighters that were looked at as 50-50 level fights and two A-grade and first battle Hall of Fame fighters in Klitschko and Wilder. And he also defeated an A-grade level fighter and Dillian White, I believe. And who knows? We don't know really how good Francis Ngannou is going to be in boxing. After that fight, there's actually a lot of people that would probably favor him over top 10 contenders. So we'll see. Tyson Fury. Oh, wow. Okay. Tyson Fury. Uh, it- you see that, folks? <laughs> you see that, folks? You know, I keep telling people. I keep telling people overall, once again, don't sleep on Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury is in my top five pound for pound for a reason. And I always get these guys that say, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, Fury's a heavyweight. Also, bullshit. Tyson Fury is up there with any pound-for-pound fighter today. Okay? He's up there with any pound-for-pound fighter today. I've been saying this for the past three years. In your opinion, who's the face of boxing right now? Andre better be careful with that statement, too, because the LDBC and new media, they might, you know what? Fuck you. (laughs) Well, Benavides knocks you out, motherfucker. (laughs) Because you know overall how they react every single time a black fighter says something positive about a Caucasian or a Latino fighter that they don't like. They fucking hate it. You know, they keep calling Shakur Stevenson now Shakun overall just because he said Fury might have a chance against Ali because of his size. Canelo says it's him. Gervonta Davis says he's the new face of boxing. Who do you believe is the face of boxing right now? That's pretty tough too. Um... Once again, I would have to say that Canelo Alvarez right now still is the main face of boxing. The pro-black cult known as the LDBC and New Media, they're, of course, trying to say that Javante Tank Davis is the new face. And, you know, I understand the argument, but at the end of the day, he's only sold one fantastic pay-per-view. 
And that was a fight that was pretty much built for the past several years between him and Ryan Garcia. You know, so these guys like Dante, they try to make the point, oh, were you saying that Ryan Garcia, so Ryan Garcia would do a million pay-per-view buys without Javante Tank Davis, right? No one's saying that, <laughs> but you're not doing a million pay-per-view buys without Ryan Garcia, that's for sure, at least not in that fight. And the reason why we know that is because against Rolly Romero, Isaac Pitbull Cruz, against Mario Barrios, all these other guys, he's not doing any more than 250,000 pay-per-view buys. You know, that's why, once again, I still have to put Canelo as the pound-for-pound pound king in terms of the face of boxing just because of the numbers that he gets. You know, sure, he hasn't had, you know, in a million pay-per-view, you know, fight in a very long time. But on average, he's getting anywhere from 300,000 at a minimum pay-per-view buys all the way up at times to 800 to 900,000. So that's why, once again, Canelo would still be the main face of boxing. But Javanta would have to be in second place for me. But, of course, Tyson Fury, you know what, he's up there as well. I think I think I think Javante Davis is. I will put it towards him. I think it's um, time for change. Of course, yeah. I think it's time for change. I think it's Javante this Davis. His following is is massive. Um, who's your favorite fighter right now? Who's the guy when he's fighting? He's like, I want to watch this. I like watching this guy fight. Yeah, I like um, Rashidi Ellis. I like Boots Ennis. Um, who else is out? Well, Rashidi Ellis recently got exposed against that one Argentine fighter, I believe. So, I mean, he's he's okay in my view. He's very good. Is he great? No. Uh, Jerome Boutsenis is an exceptional talent. He's an exceptional talent. He, in my view, is going to be the next welterweight king, no doubt about it. Uh, as long as everything goes right for him and he takes everyone seriously, you know, which I believe that he will. Uh, he's a very hungry young fighter right now, so we'll see where that goes. Uh, but, you know, uh, you know, I like Jerome Boutsenis a lot, too. He's an exceptional fighter. Yeah, I've been paying, um, I was paying attention to the Mendoza kid. Mm. Like, those guys is like, has their own style and their own way of um, capitalizing on people. Shakur Stevens, of course. Um, I think you mean Shakur Stevenson, but <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah, there's some great, okay. there's some great fighters. There's some great fighters out there. In your heart of hearts, do you believe Canelo really wants to fight you? I mean, I have to say no because he never. You know, made his mark to fight me. When I was a WBO champion at 154, he was actually my mandatory. And then I got stripped for inactivity, and then my belt, you know, that means vacant. And so he fought Liam Smith for it. When it was like and listen, once again, I've never been a fan of this narrative of, oh, Canelo just ducks all the big fights. Can Canelo has always shown that he's going to get in the ring with everybody eventually. But do I agree with Demetrius Andre that Canelo Alvarez in his heart of hearts really wants to fight him? And he said no. Yes, I do agree with him. But, <laughs> you know, I understand the perspective because I think from Canelo's point of view, Andre is a type of style that has been tricky for him in the past. And on top of that, he just probably would be a little bit too much risk for the reward. I mean, once again, how much are you really going to get if you just fight Demetrius Andre next? I mean, it'll, it'll probably do decent. You know, I'm not saying that it won't, that it'll do bad. But, you know, I'm, I'm sure that Canelo was looking at other fights, you know, that are possible that would do much bigger later on down the line, you know, where he believes that it would do better for his career anyway. You know, so this really is the best, you know, situation for Canelo, you know, if Benavidez beats out of Andre, because then he basically doesn't have to hear his name again. He, why didn't you just fight me? Yeah. Why, why didn't you just make that fight happen? Um, so at this point, I can only say... I think there was actually one point in time where Canelo Alvarez actually wanted to fight Andre, or there was talks about him potentially fighting Andre next. I think I heard that around the same time when Kilbrook and Gennady Golovkin, they had their fight set up. But I don't know what ended up happening. I can't really remember. No. Okay. More realistic fight for you next. David Morrell, Jamal Charlo, or Canelo Alvarez? It would have to be Charlo or Canelo. Okay. Last. That basically translates overall to I'm not fighting Dave Morrell. <laughs> That's basically what that fucking translates to. And you know what? I have no problem with that whatsoever. Because once again, Dave Morrell right now is a very big threat. And just like how Andre, you know, just like how a certain amount of fighters look at Andre, Andre looks at him the same way, just as David Benavidez did. That dude right now, he's very talented and he's very dangerous. And what the fuck am I going to fight him for? He does not have a belt. <laughs> you know, he's a little bit too green. And a lot of people are not going to give me credit anyway. You know, and I have the potential to lose that fight or look like shit. And I'm not getting the big payday. The fuck am I fighting him for? You know, so once again, I, I completely understand. But not least, 
do you even get to eat anything for Thanksgiving? When you fight over Thanksgiving weekend, do you get to eat? I mean, like turkey and greens, mac, cheese, anything like that. I eat that tomorrow. I can eat that today. What are you talking about? Man? What do you mean? What are you talking about? We, we fight over something I can have whatever I want. What do you mean, bro? I'll talk about over thing. You fight over Thanksgiving weekend. So the way is on Friday. Well, my Thanksgiving dinner is going to be David Benavides, man. This is, I'm sitting, yo, mommies, aunties, and grip. Like, yo, grip, yo, chill. I got this. I got the seasoning. I'm cooking up. <laughs> yo, David Benavides better stay away from the Thanksgiving table. You know, he's going to be sweating over all fucking bullets at that Thanksgiving table trying not to eat the mac and cheese. <laughs> Shit, man. Yeah. Chill. Were Don't you eating turkey it. and greens and all that stuff that weekend? I'm not really like a turkey guy, you okay. know what I'm saying, whatever. I have my, you know, okay. things I like to eat, but greens, of course. But, um, yeah, I'm going to have a little meal. Okay. I got okay. okay. the next day, but, yeah. you know, I'm slipping something real quick. Like La- avocado. La- last, but at least tell the people. Everyone always has it. It's Andre, it's Andrade. It's... Yeah, I'm wondering that as well. I need to get an answer to this. Tell the people. All right, so I am... Oh. Okay, my family is Cape Verdean. Yeah. On the map, Capo Verde, right? Yeah. In my country... Which is Portuguese, I believe. They pronounce... And also keep in mind that Cristiano Ronaldo, because I was having a debate about this at one point in time, Cristiano Ronaldo, because I had a friend of mine that was trying to debate me that Ronaldo is Caucasian, and he's not Caucasian. Now, when you take a look at a soccer player that is Caucasian, that's Lionel Messi, or Lionel Messi, however you pronounce his name, because not only does he originate from Italy, which of course is a little bit of a mixed population as well, but when you take a look at him, he has a very Caucasian complexion, and he has Caucasian features. Now, of course, he was brought up in Argentina, or Argentina, of course, as the Latinos will pronounce it, possibly, you know. And, but, and of course, he's Spanish-speaking, you know, because he was raised in a Spanish-speaking country, you know, pretty much by the time he was age of six or seven, I believe. So, of course, you know, he's going to be Hispanic in that sort of way. But Lionel Messi, once again, he's a Caucasian player when you want to talk about a Hispanic Caucasian. Ronaldo, you can tell, has some other mix in him, you know. And more than likely, it probably is black because he also is Cape Verdean. I believe, which is a, you know, Portuguese, you know, former nation. My last name is Andrade. And so when they see me as Andrade, uh-huh. that sounds pretty sexy to me. Yes. Right? And in America, is pronounced Andrade. Yeah. So I get it. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, as long as you know it's me who you're talking about, it's, me again. it's, all, it's all good. <laughs> well, since overall Demetrius Andrade, I'll start calling him that. Since he says all in all, you know, that that's his Portuguese overall uh, origin, I'll start calling him Demetrius Andrade. So some me. people, hey, Mr. Andre, yeah. hey, how you doing? Cool. Hey, it's Andrade. Hey, Mr. Andrade. It's all, it's all good. At the end of the day, um, um, in this fight, you know, last fight I said pronounce it Andre because yes. I was going against DeMar Nicholson. I was like, yeah, man, just say Andre. Yes. Now I think Benavides is Andrade is the way to it's pronounce Andrade. this fight. We'll wrap it up with this. You already heard him say they, they plan on stopping you. It, it, you. I don't know they. Well, his father. Okay, cool. When you when you think about this fight, do you, you see you see this fight going the distance? I I definitely feel like I can hit him with shots where you know I can probably put him out for sure. And we'll see about that, man. You're not really gonna have a choice in this fight because David Benavidez, <laughs> you know, uh, he he's he's gonna be it's a train coming at you now. He can be derailed. You know, if you have the right strategy and if you have enough athleticism and if you're an intelligent enough fighter, but we'll see if that's you, man. We'll see. It will do damage, and I think he will be surprised on... But if I had to predict this fight, more than likely, I would predict it to go by unanimous decision, probably by Benavidez. But if Benavidez was able to get the stoppage or a couple knockdowns, I wouldn't be surprised. The power and the movement I have where he could want to take his time more, and it could go the distance. Um... You know, he's a big kid. Yeah. He is a big kid. Um, so I know I have to weigh him down. I have to weigh him down. So, so will they call, be calling you the Monster Slayer? Or do you have you? Will you have a new na- nickname after this? Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Uh, oh yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely. Right now it's the Boogeyman versus the uh, Monster. So I love it. I love that's it. That's what it is right now. Well, that's what we do here on the last stand. We bring you the biggest names in the sport, and at 168, this man right here is right there at the top, Demetrius Andre, or if you're from American, Andre. Uh, 
Appreciate you, my brother. Good luck on the 25th. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you again next week. Oh, yeah, now. But anyways, that's pretty much about it for this video. I just thought that I would talk about that. Very interesting interview by that of Demetrius Andrade. And I think he realizes the stakes that are on this fight. And Benavides hopefully does as well. I think that he realizes the stakes on this fight as well. So this is going to be a great fight. I'm really excited for this fight. It's about 25 days out, I believe, or somewhere around there. Super, super great fight. No doubt about it. I'm really excited for this one. But anyways, that's pretty much about it for today. Great interview by Demetrius Andre and Brian Custer. That's pretty much all I got to say for today. And we'll see what happens in this fight. But anyways, that's pretty much about it. I will be, you know, releasing my breakdowns and probably my fight predictions later on. Uh, of course, probably about a week before the fight or maybe a few days. But uh, of course, that's going to be a little bit. But anyways, that's pretty much about it. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll talk to you all later.